Hello, everybody. My name is Dave Clements, and I am introducing this episode because we had some technical issues and lost John's opener. So I'm going to do that now. Uh, with us today, we have, of course, our DM, John Haru, myself playing Wilder Filch, Josiah Crandall playing Pooh the Bugbear, J.S. Earls playing Orbog the Grumpy Grumpy Half Orc, Celeste Mora playing Aileen Sugar Baker, and returning guest and publicly announced cast member for Campaign 2, Amanda Clements, returning as Mara. So that's what we've got in store for you this episode and the next one. And man, buckle up because you guys are in for a little bit of a ride. All right, here's the music. Playing games with strangers. You know there's no danger. So come on in, we're all friends Playing games with strangers Yeah, I don't really remember too much, but from my recollection, Wilder and Emran had a very nice conversation about life and the pursuit of happiness and the loss of loved ones. And at the end of the session, we had a very emotional, um, painful speech from Rhoda. And that's all I remember. Uh, also, Pooh scared a bunch of people and tried to blow up Emran. There was that. I succeeded in blowing up Emran. This is true. I succeeded. And you found you also found a functioning circle of teleportation, which took you to Fandiria. Lots of little fawn people. Yep. Were they really that little? No. In fact, Pooh almost got himself killed there. They're too. littler than me. But I remembered that I could talk to them. We're going to pick up with Mayra. Mayra, you follow your mark into the cavernous uh, maze of tunnels below the tower, uh, keeping a safe distance as to not be perceived by them or the rest of the party. Um, until you come to an open clearing where it seems many... Uh, refugees are gathering and you see the crystal being handed over to a small halfling at which her eyes go completely white and then she grabs the arm of your mark and both of their eyes go white as they stand there for several minutes and seem to become non-responsive. What would you like to do? How far away are they? Mm, I would say probably about 20 feet. Are they the only two in the room? No. Uh, like I said, this is, this is a large cavern that seems to be full of many of the uh, refugees from above. I will uh, kind of weave between people try to look as casual as possible to get just a little bit closer and uh, see if I can kind of figure out what's going on and if there's any opportunity. They both seem fairly catatonic while whatever they're doing is happening. And I, I'm going to ask this because I know that Orbog and Callum are currently not in the vicinity. Uh, so Wilder and Pooh, where are you after you guys came back into the, uh, cavern? What are you doing? They were having a conversation. So Pooh kind of, um, maybe wondered cause they were, they were up the stairs, right? Is that, that where that conversation happened? Mm -hmm. No, you guys are, you guys are below, below the remains of Castleman Lagar. 
in the large cavernous area where they where there's the tunnel okay. that goes down into the underdark. Um so I'm I would have kind of hung around for a little bit and then wandered off to to look for uh some food, see if I could find some food while um they're having that conversation. Wilder, what are you doing? I have slouched up against a wall uh just to ponder Alel and Leona, that whole situation. Okay, so you're just kind of off in your own thing. Okay, so mm-hmm. um, yeah, the rest of the the rest of the party that your mark was traveling with, they seem to have gone off amongst their own business. So, and the two the two that are there with the crystal, um, are pretty catatonic. And so I will kind of casually, just mindful of other people around, head towards the the two that seem to be completely out of it and uh, see if I can kind of quickly snatch the crystal, tuck it under my cape. Uh, are you trying to, are you trying to do it stealthily? Mm-hmm. Like, so other people, okay, so go ahead and roll a stealth check, please. It's 35. Good Lord. What? I rolled a nat 20. <laughs> nice. And- then all of the sudden, Amanda was no longer there. <laughs> Amanda Amanda appears in uh, another podcast. Uh, that's how stealthy she she shows up in someone some other room, and there's just some lady on a microphone going. No, that's the cat ASMR one. All right. Uh, so yeah, you managed to walk up and just slip the stone out of the halfling's hand at that moment the halfling and the fontar that you had encountered both collapse it it wasn't as easy as just taking it out of someone's hand like you feel like you broke a connection somewhere aileen yes you are suddenly it it feels like something inside your mind broke for a moment. So you're trying to collect yourself as you fall to the ground and you are a little bit discombobulated, but the uh, soul stone that was in your hand is gone and you can't tell who took it. No, no, no. Where did it go? Where did she go? Emeryn seems even more out of it than you are at the moment so she's a little bit non-responsive em darling you okay we need to find find your sister we need to know where she went help me look i'm just gonna start looking around can i roll an investigation for that i mean (laughs) you can certainly try i mean i understand Celeste understands. Like a 36 oh, or something like it's that. It's a three. I, I don't even. You found it. I don't even know where my own feet was, are. Yeah. Which makes sense because you're a bit out of sorts at the moment. Having that connection broken. Uh, Mayra, the crystal in your that you have just grabbed. It's weird. It's like the the lonely girl presence is still there. But there is another presence there that you are familiar with it feels like that fontar you fought with is also there now and the crystal is getting very hot very fast ouch, ouch. shake my cape a little bit wrap the cape around the stone and try to not touch where it's really warm and then i'm going to move to a, hopefully down to a corner area in the chasm where it's a little bit less conspicuous and and set it down i don't understand why is it different it's getting super hot does it the smell of heat at all venison cooking do i said when you say smell of heat like i'm looking for food as poo would. Yeah, this isn't gonna sm- this what? isn't gonna smell like food. It doesn't smell like something cooking. No. Okay. If anything, it would smell like hot dirt. I'll take it. <laughs> you find a a corner that seems like a decent place to sulk, 
as there is somebody else already sulking in this area. Wilder, you're you're sitting there kind of contemplating LL and Leona in the periphery of your vision. Someone comes and sets down and puts down a uh, something, a shiny something. Oh, uh, hello. I, I can scoot over a little bit. Wait. I'm going to roll a history check to see if I remember who she is, because I'm pretty sure I saw her previously. The only time Felix slash Wilder has encountered this individual, it was in very briefly in passing outside of the tower when you were feeble minded. Okay. Oh, sorry. Let's get over. Um, what you got? Nothing. Just, just a rock. A rock. You normally carry around a rock, like a pet rock. It's got a name. I just found it. Found a rock in a cavern. Yeah. Strange, I know. That's where you would find rocks. Yeah. Um. Do you normally collect rocks? Sometimes. If they're interesting. Uh, My daughter collects rocks. Could I see the rock you have? I mean, it's mine, but... I'm not... I don't want to take it. I just want to see it. Like, she used to do that. Uh, You know how little kids, like, they just want to, like, gather a rock from every place they've ever been, and then they, like, leave them in their room, and then you step on them and, like, twist your ankle and all that stuff. Um, I've kind of... I'm not a connoisseur of rocks, but... I mean, sorry, you just met me. Um. Speaking of rocks, this bread is not very good. I say as I walk towards Wilder in this conversation. Are you sure it is bread, Pooh? Um, well, it's kind of squishy, like a little bit. Do you want a bite? No. Uh, Mayra, yeah, you, mm. you, Mayra, you do recognize this bugbear, however as you it's hard to forget a bugbear that's traveling with the person that you were following no thank you you sure it's um it's uh it's tasty ish i kind of turn away and continue looking at the stone trying to figure out how in the world i'm going to move it it's starting to glow now by the way (laughs) great do I see that finally? I was going to ask the same thing. It, both of you roll perception checks. 27. 8. 14? Wilder and Aileen, yes, you both see it because you're in a very dark place right now, both physically and mentally, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> but, and so something glowing is going to stand out quite a bit. I'm going to run over there. Because it looks like what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And Aileen? Yes? Because you are the aspect of death now, uh, and you know it just with the territory comes a knowledge of soul, how souls and soul adjacent paraphernalia work. You uh, know that a soul stone can only have one entity in it. And Emran is not currently in herself. Well, she's not responding. I'll let you draw whatever conclusions you want. Oh, uh, a- Aileen, I have a question. Hold on. Is this bread or is it? Oh, H- hang on one second, Pooh. We can deal with that in a second. Uh, th- where did that come from? That glowing stone? Oh, yeah. That's a glowing rock. You didn't tell me it was a glowing rock. Let's have it. No, no. It. It's. If this is not- what I think it is, this is very bad. And I need to take this back over towards the body of my friend who is laying unconscious. And we will deal with you in a minute. Hey, Pooh, could you put the bread down? I think we might need your um, large assistance uh, over no. here. I heard, I heard, friend unconscious. I'm ready to go. Uh, you, you wouldn't mean Imran, would you? Yes. 
She and I were having a conversation uh, with a soul, a soul stone, and all of a sudden the soul stone wasn't there. Emran is unconscious, and now this stone is glowing. And I feel like two look, and two equals look four. Look you. Yes. No. It does? Yes. It does. Sorry. It's got... Okay. Two cookies you plus two cupcakes look, equals four baked goods. Oh, now you're talking. But focus. You. You, um, you with the stone... Can, could we please borrow that for a second? Okay, uh, Celeste, I need you to roll a d6 for me, please. Oh, I don't like the sound of that. Six. Okay, the countdown starts at six. Go ahead. Countdown. So while they're arguing, Mayor is going to try to rewrap the stone. But it's still very hot, right? Yeah, as soon as as soon as you try to wrap it, what you're trying to wrap it with catches fire. Cool, cool. Oh, I'm gonna go ahead and try to uh, grab it. Okay, uh, with my metal hand. What? Oh, I forgot about that. Dang it. <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, Mayra, you watch as this giant uh, bear-like being reaches down and grabs the grabs the child. Excuse me. What are you doing? Uh, I don't touch her. Five. Um, we we need we need this. I, I need to get my friend back into her body. I think that's what I feel like is is going on here. Is is that correct? Um, Aileen. Yes. Yes. Come on. Let's get back right. to to Amran. Where, where where is she? She's right over there. The way. Four. <laughs> I'm on my way to Imran. I'm holding it. We're just Pooh and I are just going. Yeah. But it's mine. It's not yours. We can talk. Are you doing anything to combat this, Mayra? Yeah, but it's very hot. I can't exactly hold it anyway. So I'm going to follow very unhappily. Okay. <laughs> All right. We, we get to Im- Imran, I guess. Yeah. Um, now, now, how does this work? I'm, uh, well, it's it's seems rather warm. I think Do I you have, want it I th- or should I? I think I have to hold it and I think I have to touch Imran. Okay. So I'm going to uh, here just, just set tell it. Tell me when. Set it right here, and then you'll give it back. I'm going to ignore Mayra. I set it down. I think you can just wait until we do what we have I'm to do. I'm going to touch Emrin, and I'm going to touch the Soul Stone. Yeah. As soon as you do that, you feel a large, angry force flow through you as Emrin convulses, and the slow and the Soul Stone immediately stops glowing. Did we, Did we do, do it? it? Well, it stopped glowing. Is Pooh still holding it? No, it's on the ground. On the I ground. said it on the cool. ground. I'm going to have that now. Mm-hmm. I'm touching it, though. Yeah, but I'm going to try to take it anyway. Okay. <laughs> well, you do that. You fixed it. It's mine now. Um, I'm, I'm looking at... I, I'm watching Imran right now. I'm not paying attention to the stone, making sure that she's okay. And I am watching the ladies and the stone, and I would just like to offer to help Aileen stop Mira from taking this. How close is Mira to me? I was um, hovering, so I followed Pooh, and then when it was set down, I was hovering right next to it, basically just ready to go. So probably within melee, five five feet. I'm going to cast... I'm going to cast Feeble Mind, which means you have to make an intelligence saving throw. Am I smart? Wilder tasted this one recently. Tastes like, I don't remember. I'm not smart. Well, maybe, no, it's 11. Guess who just got dumb? Yeah, (laughs) because that's not the, the DC's higher than that. So, uh, I have blasted you in the mind. Attempting to shatter your intellect and personality, you take 4d6 psychic damage. Ooh. In addition to the intelligence saving throw. And your intelligence and your charisma score are one now. And at the end of every 30 days, you can try to make a saving throw to, to regain that. So just so you know. All right. Fast forward 30 days. Or if someone hits them with a greater restoration. Yeah. Good luck with that. Considering that you were about to steal our friend, I don't 
think that's going to be a thing. So, I wonder what she needed with this. I don't know. But, uh, has has anybody, like, how, how does Emran look to y'all? Emran? Hello, Emran? Are you, are you all right? <sighs> I'm, I'm like right there in Emran's face, yes. <laughs> she, she, she just kind of cracks her eyes open. She goes, ugh, what? just happened i just i was talking to rhoda and then it got really hot and now i'm on the ground i i think what happened is that your voice deepened really we're gonna do this josiah it's it's required (laughs) (laughs) i think what happened dear is that this young lady over here (laughs) decided ixnay on the ear day Huh? You know, just be careful about using the D word. I don't speak dwarven. Um, this young lady over here apparently tried to snatch the soul stone, and it was in the middle of our conversation, quite rude to interrupt, and uh, you stayed in the soul stone instead of your body, and thankfully she did not get very far, so we were able to bring the soul stone back over here and put your soul back where it belongs. Everything's a okay now, and you're not going to take it again, are you? All right? I give her a stern look. I don't think she's going to be doing much of anything. What? Is, why? Why? Why is she licking the ground? Well, yeah, that's not a fun time. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad it hurt, not me, but, you know, not a fun time. I just needed her to stop, but I didn't want to hurt her. Okay. Well, she she looks great. Perfectly normal. I mean, if that's, if that's not hurting someone, then I'd hate to see you hurt someone. Well, the other option was to just, just kill her, and I didn't think that that was a good idea. Uh, that's, that's a valid point. Valid point. I mean, especially with these people around and whatnot. You could have just, like, slapped her hand or something. No. She was very stubborn. I need. I needed to, to make her stop, and she was not going to stop. She is not going to stop licking that floor anytime soon. So, do we just leave her here and move on? I don't know what the next step is. I don't really think we got that far. Emran tries to stand up, but her back legs stagger underneath her and pretty much the only thing that's holding up is holding her up at the moment is her busted combat wheelchair that who blew up oh, oh you oh, should be easy easy there Emran. probably sit stay sitting down for a while darling i'm just uh, gonna take a nap that's a good idea we'll keep watch while you sleep okay um, i'll find a blanket aileen yes from your perspective you know what's going on this is very much like when you guys resurrected uh Amrin, the la- from the coronation in red gotcha you basically because basically having her soul taken from her body and put back in it is very similar to being resurrected i imagine having your soul ripped from your body and then shoved back in is a little traumatic especially when it's a forceful thing yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's the rip so Pooh has gone to seek some blankets. Uh, Mayra, you have strange people around you making audible noises at each other. You aren't certain of your circumstances in your currently addled brain, as well as you see the purple stone, you see it as a child and you're not certain why in the hands of the uh, halfling. But none of them have any particular meaning to me except that one that one stone okay so i'm going to kind of walk over a little bit unsteadily towards the halfling with the stone and just reach out for it i'm going to hand her a brownie for my bag i guess i eat i eat the brownie oh wait Aileen. yes dear you have brownies in your bag Yes, you've had quite a few. You want one? Yes, please. There you go, darling. Thank you. So with Brownie in one hand, I'm still reaching towards the stone with the other. She wants another. Here, 
take a cinnamon roll. Oh, those are good. You'll like those. I'm just going to continually put things in her hands to keep her from reaching for the stone. I'm going to uh, take some of the rope out of my pack and uh, lash her hands together behind her back so that she can't grab for the stone anymore. Are you going to contest this, Mayra? Yeah. (laughs) All right. I need opposing strength rolls, please. I got a nat 20. Well, I didn't, so... I got a nat 20 plus one. All right, so you are able to restrain her. I need you to roll a survival check for your knot tying, though. 19. Hey, that's actually pretty decent. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, so you are able to tie her up. I was actually waiting for somebody to eventually do that to try to figure out the the situation. So you have your tied up elf who has been feeble-minded. What are you guys doing at this point? Uh, Emran is a bit more, a bit down for the count at the moment. John, would we be aware of any medical people or healers in the area that could tend to Emran? You would know that uh, Callum could. (laughs) Right. Yes. But Callum did say, oh, well, if there's no, you know, I guess we'll just take a rest here, maybe. So if there was, you know, maybe you might want to let them know of a change of circumstance. Due to the prompting from some ethereal being. Bro, I am um, not prompting you. Don't treat it like that. <laughs> I don't need another person yelling choo-choo at me in the background. No, no, no. I I am not going to yell choo-choo. Everybody knows that. No, you're just going to call <sighs> me out in a passive-aggressive kind of way. I'm not passive aggressive at all. <laughs> no. Hi, uh, Callum, uh, we have a bit of a situation here. Um, somebody trying to steal soul stone and, uh, she's, she's tied up right now. Uh, but Emran's in trouble. Uh, so if you could like hurry back, that'd be great. Um, you, you may have to do the, Whatever thing. I don't know. Whatever cleric stuff you have. Tell Orbog hi. Uh, Orbog, Callum is away. Making like Saul in a cave, if you catch my drift. But you hear the stone of far speech go off and you hear Wilder say that through there. So, I mean, if you would like to respond to it. Oh, hey, Wilder. Or Pooh, or whoever. No, it's me. Uh, where are you and Callum? We could really use Callum. Not that we couldn't use you, but it's kind of desperate with Emre and whatnot. Um, how much is it worth to you? <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, we're in a cave. We're hiding in a cave like wimpy, whiny boys. Why? Uh, I, I don't know. I was following his lead. And his lead stinks. <laughs> okay. So, uh, are you headed back this way? Or hot- headed the opposite direction? It'd be really nice if you guys get back. That's all I'm saying. As a matter of fact, we're heading back right now. Is there anything you'd like me to pick you up on the way? Uh, no, maybe, uh... Honey. Honey, maybe, we're running low. Maybe a range of cleric boy. Um... Who has daddy issues? That'd be great. Okay. Yeah. We already have one of those. I'll look for one of those. That's what I was implying, Pooh. I was talking about Callum. Oh, there's small words. Oh, small yes, words. yes, exactly. I get it. I get what you did there, Wilder. You're very clever. Okay. So I don't know if you caught that, but we do have um, someone who's tried to steal the sto- the soul stone. Why is it so hard to say? Aileen uh, feeble-minded her, so uh, we went ahead and tied her up just for safekeeping. So that shouldn't go anywhere, but we're kind of stuck here not knowing. I'm going to turn away from the Stone of Fire speech. Hi, Aileen, how did that conversation that you were having with Emran go? What? <laughs> <laughs> um, that... That, uh, hmm, 
Let let's just say that uh, Roto's Roto's not in a good place mentally. Okay, yeah, well, Bug, you should probably get here with Callum as soon as possible. Okay, I don't need anything else. I don't think. I need my dagger back. But anyway, go. Th- th- that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna go check on Emran. I'm gonna put the stone away okay. before he even gets the okay. chance to respond. And I'm going to walk over and... This is Orbog. You can reply to this message. (laughs) When you go to check on Emran, she's sleeping. Any ideas for what we should do in the meantime, everyone? Anybody got a deck Um, of cards? Always. I think there's someone here I could actually beat at a game of cards. (laughs) (laughs) That's probably true. Let's see. I, I grab the deck of cards. Don't be mean to uh see if I can um beat our mysterious stranger in a game of cards. And I yeah, I just lay him out in front and start start trying to uh, Pooh, get her um, to in- Pooh, that's solitaire. That's one for one person only. I think I'm winning. <laughs> Maybe. Several hours go by because according to Callum in the last episode, they were pretty much underneath the mountain when you had messaged them last time. Uh, so they finally get back Orbog. It's been a long day of walking for no purpose. So however, Orbog would respond to that emotionally speaking is up to you, but Callum is now back at the camp. Okay. I brought the important person with me. I mean, you're important too. Hey, Orbog. Oh, okay. Yeah. Callum. Hello, Callum. Is there anything you can do for Amran? Callum's like, yeah, I can. Yeah, and so does a healing word on Amran, and then Callum looks at you and he says, uh, yeah, so I, I'm getting a vibe off of this. Like, it doesn't matter how much I heal her. Uh, it's just going to take a couple days before she's all right. Well, I mean, physically all right anyway. What's going on with her? I was about to ask if you thought you might be able to to fix what I've done with her now that we have her tied up. She's winning. That's what's going on. <laughs> I don't know how. Uh, yeah. As, but she's winning. As, as you guys look down with her hands, be t- tied behind her back and feeble minded Pooh and uh, Mayra are playing pinochle and she somehow not being able to touch the cards and being feeble minded has been shooting the moon on this, on this recent hand. Who? Please tell me you're not playing for money. Uh, I'm not playing for money. Is that why you only have your shirt on now? Yes. <laughs> I'm just wearing the uh, the guard's jacket. I had to take off the fancy boy clothes. They're in a pile next to Mira. <laughs> she won them. This new person walks up to you, Mira, um, and begins to stick his hands out towards your face. Don't like that. No, I don't. <laughs> not, not Orbog. <laughs> not uh, Orbog. I wouldn't put, the it, important I wouldn't put character. it past Orbog. The important. <laughs> I'm just gonna like lean back away from him real quick. Quick, just no. And he's like, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. And he he kind of lunges forward and grabs the side of your face. And suddenly, as he does this, uh, like this this cloud in your mind lifts and you are feel more like yourself. Uh, Callum looks at the rest of you guys. He goes, uh, you guys got to stop doing this. I can't keep just showing up. Like there's got to be a way for you guys to stop having this happen. He, he mean, just kind of mutters and goes and I'm, sits next to Emran. I make no, no bones about the fact that I was trying to not kill the poor girl. I just wanted to incapacitate. Incapitas- inc- I can't talk. <laughs> yeah, decapitator. Celeste <laughs> cannot talk tonight. Incapacitate her. Well, that doesn't sound very good. Well, she's alive, isn't she? Now, dear, what is your name? What? She's going to struggle. Her name's what? <laughs> I believe it's Hello. what? Uh. H- Hello, what? Uh? what? I am poor. You might want to take your finger out of your nose. I'm going to look around for the stone. I'm going to 
directly get into her face. Sweetheart, I asked you what your name was. She said it was Wata. I'm just thinking it's probably not not her name. Maybe she wants some water. That's what she was saying. Water. Dry mouth from all the dirt. I'm still on board with decapitating her. We are not killing this person. Stop it. Maybe eventually. And not unless she gives us reason. Here, have some water. Water. Those I, cinnamon I rolls are my, a little my... dry. So's the ground. That's also true. Can I try to, while they're talking, slip a dagger out of my belt to cut my bonds? I am right in your face, though, so... Make a sleight of hand check. Okay. But it's behind my back. This is 22. You're sitting on the ground, and I'm just, like, yeah, right Yeah, she rolled a 22, and your passive perception is 19, so you ain't seeing it. Uh, so, yeah, you, you slip that dagger out. Okay. I'm going to be working on the tie behind my back and lean back just a little bit because she's in my face. And as and you do, that. I take the canteen and start pouring some water in your mouth. <laughs> Stop. There you go. There's some water Don't for you. Don't drown her, boo. <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's, it's called it's called enhanced uh, enhanced interrogation tactics. Torture. There you go. That should fix you right up. <clears throat> I'm going to cast fascinate on her what does that do it means that she sees me as a person she trusts Ooh. she has to make a wisdom saving throw celeste went from being a ancillary character just to coming out of the box throwing spells around one of those i just put on my my spell sheet and the other one i was like oh what's this 12 oh no you did not because mine's a 17 i didn't succeed okay so you, th- I am trustworthy. Oh, okay. How long does the spell last, Celeste? About three minutes. It's not long. I'm Mayra. Mayra, that's a lovely name. Now, dear, why are you trying to take this stone? It's the child. I must protect her. She's mine. No, I can understand wanting to protect her, but she's not yours. She is. She was alone. She was alone by choice. Now, I do think that that we need to not let her be alone. We need to to support her and and help her during this very difficult season of her life. But yes, so give she, her to me. No. Did you know her in life? I found her. We, are, we have her best interests at heart. Now, if you would like to stay with us while we take care of her, that is fine. But you cannot take her. Uh, not, not to interrupt, but to interrupt. Who is the child? That's Rhoda in the Soul Stone. Oh. Ma'am, you need to understand that the, the child that's in this Soul Stone, the soul that is here, belongs to her sister. And a dear friend of ours. Ha! You did it again. I did. So you are welcome to to stick with us so that we can protect her, but you cannot just take her and run. We can't let you do that. But where were you when they wanted her killed? Sadly, we thought she was safe and she was not. She was safe with me. We trusted the wrong person. So you can understand why we don't want to leave her alone with someone after having misjudged. Aileen was also dead recently. I'm pretty sure I judged him spot on. That's that's a conversation for another day. Has Aileen backed out of my personal space at all? I'm just kind of like, I sat down. Because I'm assuming you're still sitting down. So, like, I'm in your space, but I sat down rather than just, like, in your face. So, you'll let me stay to take care of the child? Yes. We will. If We we are all for taking care of this child. I have a question. What's up, Pooh? Yes. Um, I do think she would like being called the child. No. She seems more like... Teenage-ish. I'm not great with ages, but... Her her name's Rhoda. Yes, Rhoda. 
I, be- I or believe we could she's... call her the angst stone. That also might fit. I think she's 15, 16. Ember would know better. But still a child. She may not think so, but... She's also my daughter's, like, best friend. Recent best friend. Indeed. Uh, speaking of uh, Aileen. Yes. Uh, sorry, not to interrupt. No, to interrupt no. again. Um, uh, when when you talk to Leona, uh, does she did she say anything about LL? No, I'm sorry, she didn't. Oh, okay. That's that's fine. We'll find her. We have to find her. Um, we will find her. Yeah, we need to get on that. So just just so you understand, um, ma'am, what what did you say your name was again? Oh, look at Aileen. So she's the one I find trustworthy. It's okay, dear. It's Mayra. So, um, everything is going on around here right now in Towerfall, and I assume everywhere else. It's, it's not bigger our fault. than. Oh well, I don't know if it's our fault. But the point is, it's bigger than all of us. But it very much has to do with us every everyone here and i just kind of pointed everybody we're trying to stop it yes we are trying to stop it but we would appreciate your cooperation we can't give you this soul stone back and uh i i don't want to threaten you i would rather go along uh, as peacefully as possible but if it does come to violence it will fight you i will fight you and what are you going to do for rhoda protect her to the end we're still trying to figure things out and uh aileen here she's a very important um she's being. death what oh, kind of she's an, that's, an, an aspect that, that's a, a long conversation that i'm not entirely sure uh you know that may not have the right that may have not so just uh, the the aspect. Forget I said anything. The, the aspect of death uh, saved my life, and as a result, I am now the aspect of death. Um. And and Callum over there has something going on that's involved in all this. So, but as a result, I has to do with me, Pa. <laughs> Uh, as a result, because do, do you know that what this is? You would understand this is a soul stone. This is not just a, a rock that feels like a girl. Yes, there's a, there's a girl inside. Okay. It's, it's part of my responsibilities to care for and protect soul stones. So um i haven't completely figured that out as to how how that works but i do know it is a responsibility of mine and i take my responsibility serious noted all right then why why do you care about rhoda so much she reminds me of someone she she reminds yeah she reminds us of rhoda actually she's like a spitting image of rhoda i think wherever you care about like we care like just one little step higher. Or bug, you're not helping. What? Uh, this is. Can I be the aspect of taxes? It could be the aspect Sorry. of foot and mouth. That that fits. Oh, Sorry. Are you telling me you care for Rhoda more than I do? I'm telling you that Wilder is willing to fight you to the death. Over I would say if anybody cares more than anybody else, it would be Emran because Emran has grown up with Rhoda. Yeah. Right. Perfect. I'm just going to stand up and walk over to the stone and pick it up. <laughs> Wait, how'd she do hey. that? And then I'm going to hand it to Aileen. Okay. Thank you. I trust you. Okay. I appreciate your trust. I get the impression it's not easily won. But I'm not leaving that stone. That's okay. And like glue yourself to it. Or- that being said, have we had dinner yet? And some brownies. I will say, Mara, given your profession, uh, you do recognize uh, Felix. You you do know that he is the head of the Thieves Guild. Overlord. The very tiny Thieves Guild. 
Yeah, it would be tiny to my memory. Oddly enough, no. Huh. <gasps> I'm special. Uh. So, Mayra, if you're going to continue along on this journey for however long, what do you bring to the table? Skills, that kind of thing. Oh, is it time to eat? I know. I, table? Is this metaphorical? Metaphorical table. Specifically talking about skills that Mara brings to this group. Because she's not leaving, apparently. I'm a trained assassin. Which I'm sure you oh, know. My brother's training to do that. Oh, yeah, because you killed all of them. Oh. Is this a great idea? I mean, a trained assassin, that sounds healthy. I'm going to share a look with Wilder as one profession on the underside of Towerfall to the other. If I'm real honest, I haven't really had time to go through all the books and meet all the people, but I'm sure maybe we've seen each other in passing. I'm I'm sorry. This this situation has kept me very, very busy since I've been back to Towerfall. Well, it's only natural I know of you, but the point is that you didn't know of me. You know, for an assassin, I feel like that's a good thing. Oh, yeah. yeah I would. Very sneaky. That's so... Oh, she doesn't need Thank an ego you. boost. Who? Okay. <sighs> I know what I'm capable of. Can you see me if I do this? Whoa. I try to hide. <laughs> It's just your hands in front Blind of your face. Alien. <laughs> no, I, I I try to dive somewhere to see if I can impress her with my sneakiness. All right, roll a stealth check. A twelve. Roll a per- What's your passive perception, Mayra? Twenty-two. Yeah, you see him. Very impressive. Oh, I like her. She can stay. Rolls my eyes. <laughs> Glad she has your vote. Okay, uh, not to be a party pooper, but I desperately could use a rest. Um, that whole bout with uh, Pooh and Emrin and the dynamite, that was... That was something. I'm sorry about that. Unless anyone has a healing potion or something like that just lying around. And you're telling me this is the safest place for Rhoda? Believe it or not, yes. I said you could trust me. <laughs> it's, it's it's safe because we know what's going on. Okay. We know what's going down. It was an accident. Yeah, you, you'll come to learn that who does mean well. Um, he is a bugbear of little brain, but we love him. Like you, a little bit ago. He reminds me of a construct I met recently. Not an mm. aspect? No, that's different. A construct? That is different. Are you talking to a building? Construct. No. It was I walking and talking. Just like you. A building, Very loudly. A building that, that was walking and talking? I think, I think she's still a bit. little bit crazy. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, could we just settle down for the night? And, uh... Get some rest. In this cavern. I mean, There's other people here, so probably, yeah. Un- unless you have like a hotel reserve somewhere, that would, that's fine. Oh, do, yeah, do you? I just wondered if it was the safest place with everything going on. Well, there's definitely less safer places. We could go outside. Callum responds to you, Mara, and he goes, I mean, do you know of a safer place? That would be nice if I did. It'd be safer if we could get rid of whatever is happening out there. Well, for that, I need at least a nap. Uh, Callum goes, and I have some ideas, too. Oh, well, somebody has ideas. Good. We'll talk about that later. So are you guys taking a rest? Yes. (laughs) <laughs> Most definitely need a long rest. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, Dave. <laughs> it's okay. Because 
as everybody settles in to sleep, uh, Wilder, Felix, you are laying there slightly unsettled as you would be with a missing daughter that you are uncertain as to where she is and if she is currently okay. And you kind of get the urge to pee. God, I'm getting old. (laughs) And your eyes pop open. And you are experiencing sleep paralysis. You're, you're, You're laying there, but you can't move. As the entire survivor camp is currently sleeping. And as your eyes are moving around, you hear... You hear faint footsteps coming towards your direction and you can't move. And you see a pair of legs standing next to you as you are lying on the ground. But it's not like they're legs. They're they're the shape of legs that have been cut out of reality. And as you lay there and your eyes follow the legs up to see a figure that has wings and, but it's like, it's cut the The whole figure is cut out of reality. It's just blackness. And this figure has long hair and it has the familiar coals for eyes, except instead of burning red, they're, more a glowing icy blue and it's weird it's like this shadow has taken the na- almost like it's the negative form of leona standing over you and still you can't move any p leave it to js to you said he needed to pee <laughs> He's got a point. <laughs> following, I'm following the train. <laughs> and Leona reaches down and her hand passes through your face as you feel her reaching into your head. And it's at this moment that you know that these shadow creatures, how they function is they reach in to your mind and they don't change what is they just change your perception and it's messing around inside your head and you remembering that time when you were in water deep and you got busted selling this stone to an official and Fenric Coldwater was murdered and you ran and ran and ran it. Cause of course you're, you're wilder and, and that that's who you are. You're, you're, you're wire, wilder filch. But then the memory of LL comes to mind and that's the only thing that doesn't make sense is who is this, who is this girl? And then you begin to realize what happened in water deep nobody was sent to change your memories but this has all happened before and with a start wilder you wake up screaming and everybody in the camp hears it You have been listening to the Playing Games with Strangers podcast with the voices of John Haryu, Catherine Serwinski, Dave Clements, J.S. Earls, Celeste Mora, Josiah Crandall, Eric Campagno, and Steve MacDonald. The theme music was written and performed by Steve Arthur, used with permission. Find more of his music on Facebook or wherever you purchase music digitally. Please review this podcast wherever you download it from to help other podcasters find our podcast and join our community. And once again, thank you for listening.
A massive thanks to our Blade Level patrons, Julie Earls, Aaron Peckham, Josh Clements, Branson Boykin, Debbie Roth, Matthew Cosby, Random Encounters, and Indubitably. Learn more and see how you can support the show by going to patreon.com slash playing games with strangers.